You're at home, the lights are out, the power's off, the cell phone system is down, and even your local repeater system is down. You need a plan. Whether you're in an off-grid or grid-down scenario, you're in the backcountry, you just want to maintain some communication with the folks back home or with your group, you need to know that you can use this method of communication with an HF radio and a wire antenna. All right, well, welcome back to the channel. This is KI7WJP. My name is Eric from Backcountry Amateur Radio. We just got off the air with a really cool test. It is right now 2320 UTC, and it is October 8th on Saturday afternoon. Near Vertical Incident Skywave experiment started at 3 o'clock. We did experiments on 80 meters, experiments on 40 meters as well. And the idea was to see if we could do that during the day. Um, this is K7SW Kevin, and you might know him from his ra ham radio channel, uh, K7SW Ham Radio, and uh, a couple other ham radio operators that he knows. And we're operating all in different locations. Uh, two of them were in uh, Spanish Fork. He was out in the mountains, uh, 24 miles uh, south by southeast of here. Um, and then I'm here. I'm in Midway, Utah, in a small city park that had enough trees allowed me to set up my equipment uh, and i didn't realize that we could do envis so successfully if the conditions were good during the daytime you can see this is the ft 817 nd now this radio will put out five watts what's really fascinating with that is how well five watts can work for communication in these situations now on top of mountains i can communicate out halfway around the United States is really, really good quality signal reports. But the FT817 does exceptionally well when your antenna's set up, when you know what your band conditions are, and when you're far away from things that might interfere with your signal. Let's get in here and I'll show you what's going on with Nivis communication here at the park. In this video, I really do encourage you to watch the whole thing and listen to the transmissions that come through as that's part of the content. It talks about the ideas, the usefulness, and execution of near vertical incident skywave. Good, and I heard Eric. Let's see if Eric comes back and if you're able to hear him at all. Um, KI7 WJP, go ahead. This is Kilo India 7, Whiskey Julia Papa. I hear you all loud and clear. Yeah, I, I can hear him just fine here. I'm in Spanish Fork and uh, putting out probably right around uh, uh, 5 watts. So uh, are you able to hear me up there in Hebrew? You were coming in in an F9, um, <laughs> F9, and I mean, you're a 5.9, five 5.9, nine, five nine, absolutely crystal clear, so I actually am really impressed that this is happening on 80 meters right now. Well, you're perfectly readable. I don't have you at uh, a 9, but I do have you uh, peaking up to about 6 or 7 at times. Uh, right before the end of your last transmission, you were down to 5. Uh, it's coming through perfectly well. I mean, I, uh, I could uh, read everything you were saying, so it's uh, really good. Um. By the way, I'm also running QRP. I am running five watts for you. I think this has been a, a, a good uh, test to see how uh, the NVIS works, uh, especially this time of day and everything. Back to you. I did not hear Kevin at all on 40 meters, but here on 80 meters, it's working uh, really well. It's good to know that uh, just five watts will jump over the mountains and I can talk to Heber as well. And I like this idea of, uh, you know, the repeater system ever goes down and things like that. Uh, we have an another option for local communication. Uh, Kevin, you still there? I'll hand it back over to you. K7SW, N7GPG. N7GPG, K7SW. Yeah, yeah, I was just listening to you guys. You both sound really good. Your signals will be up at F9. And uh, Eric, it's really interesting. When he was saying that you were fading, there was some QSB. He went from 5.7 down to nothing. I can still hear you because I have zero noise floor. But that was just crazy. And then it went back up to... Uh, S8, S9 again, and, and this is a really good test. I'm, get, I'm, I'm curious, Eric, I'm curious, Eric, what antenna are you running over to you? K7WJP, uh, K7SW. Kevin, you're coming through an S+, plus, S9+, plus, um, and it's remarkable. Um, your signal is extremely strong. Homebrew antenna that I built out of 24 AWG silicone coated uh, copper wire. Uh, it's got a built-in choke with a 43 type ferrite and uh, running about 12 feet of 
or maybe 15 feet of RG316. So that Looks like we've all gone down a little bit on the band here. Uh, Kevin, you're coming in at about a five and five and eight from the uh, five and a nine plus that you had. Um, and I think Royce is that. I think that's the same. <laughs> Sorry, um, you are coming through, but it's definitely a quality of four. And I forgot I was not looking at my screen. You're all about a four and a five and four and a four. So. Uh, on a signal or more. So, but either way, we were still talking here, so that's, uh, that's the important part. The other guys had to pack up, so Kevin and I remained on the air, and Kevin suggested we test out 40 again. And so I went out and undid the link on my 80 meter dipole and brought it down to the 40 meter band. And this is the link, is actually a, a homemade job that I did in the garage. Hit me up if you guys would like something like this. Um, and then, yeah, we got back on 40, and it was pretty good, but not nearly as good as 80. Here's this frequency in use, Kilo India 7 Whiskey Julia Papa. Kilo 7 Sugar Whiskey. This is Kilo India 7 Whiskey Julia Papa. All right, well, you're uh, coming in in a 5.9, or sorry, 5.8, 5.8, uh, 5.8.9, somewhere in there, but it's, it's working really well. You're about at 5.5. Five. It's all clear, but you're totally readable on both antennas, and I think I'm running to 10 watts here on this KX2. Uh, the audio on that KX2 is remarkable, I'll tell you what. Well, this is a buddy pull. It's only like 9 feet off the ground, not the same uh, north-south direction. I can hear you really good on it as well. You, oh, your antennas all seem to be working to get to me, so that's great. I want to have a good experiment for the different end of antennas to see what's what and what's to it. So it does seem like that you've got a dipole. Uh, Keith had a dipole, I have a dipole, and those were always working well with each other. After I started getting set up, and just the run around, I have it set up for a couple of weeks. And I have to tell you, when you get even just the teeniest bit out of practice, it takes longer to get your setup going. And your field station needs to be able to be deployed quickly and readily when, say, it's an emergency. If you are fascinated by Nivis communication, just get out and do it and work through the kinks. That way you're more prepared for any challenges you might encounter during an emergency event. Um, as far as power source here, yeah, I've hooked up to a bio and o, uh, 